Arcadia, the once a land of living legends. Long ago, brave warriors across the realm stood together against an immortal evil known as the Old Ones. In the wake of this struggle, the champions locked away the power of the Old Ones inside Eternia Crystal. Recently, the realm's heroes, called to a faraway crusade, have left their younger kin to tend the castle and its chores. Bored of their dreary duties, and imagining action and adventure, the pupils accidentally unleash an ancient force that has long been dormant. Now these heroes in training will have to grow up quickly. Together they will defend the Eternia crystals against those who would seek to resurrect the ancient evil. Hello YouTube, and welcome to the first episode of Dungeon Defenders. I'm only going to show that beginning part this one time, because it does take kind of a while. So, uh, we'll be playing on local first, and this always comes up. And I forgot to delete all these, because I was going to start fresh. So this is going to take a little second to uh, delete all these. I probably should have just recorded this at another time, or just, you know, stop the recording and do all that. But now you get kind of a sneak peek at all the little characters, even though you really know nothing about them. Alright, so... Donning his robe and wizard hat, the apprentice is eager to delve deeper into the world of the arcane. Under the guidance of the Grand Magus, the apprentice has learned the art of conjuration. While summoning towers of mystical defense to aid him, he blasts his enemies with waves of magic from afar. He is going to be the first class that I choose, the apprentice. And he can you can change the outfits, but really I just stick with the normal one, partly because you have to unlock all the other outfits, and I can't unlock them. I mean, you have a few of them. Okay, technically I did unlock those, but I'll explain that later. Uh, so this is him. You can change color either by the presets or by uh, changing the actual color over here. I'm going to... Um, okay, so those are all the colors. I'm going to choose the spirited just because I like that color. And I'm going to call him Merlin, as you already saw from the other one. And just, I think it's one of the preset names that you can choose. Okay, this is the crystal. Uh, you'll be defending it on all the levels. You can choose a bunch of different crystals, but I'm not going to take the time to show it. You can also change color of stuff. But again, let's just get actually to the game. Uh, you can use uh, multiplayer, but you have to use a game controller or something. Or you have to have different accounts. I'm not really sure how to use it. But I always play... Uh, on one laptop, so that's fine. Alright, so for the first level... Never mind. Let's go here. Uh, whenever I choose this level, it always shows that beginning intro thing. I'm just going to skip it, because you already saw it. That this is the first level, the deeper well. Which makes you wonder, is there a deep well and a deepest well? Why is this deeper and not just deep? And this is the level up that you start off on. Now there's eight stats, technically ten, but eight right now that you can upgrade when you level up and you have one point to spend. It's hero health, hero damage, hero speed, hero casting rate, defense health, defense base damage, defense area of effect, and defense attack rate. Basically, these hero stats are for if you want to be a damage dealing person, a, a DPS, which is damage per second. Uh, defenses are if you like more of a tower defense type of gameplay, uh, which for the purpose of this video, I will use it. Um, and I'll increase the damage first. Um, 
and so now I'm at level 1. So let's get started. Uh, you run into these chests to open them. You can jump on them or just run into them. And you'll see in the bottom corner um, I have 40 mana which I use to build uh, these magic missile towers. Uh, there are other towers that you can use but you have to level up to unlock them and just get another 40 to replace another one right here. The reason I'm, I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, each chest always contains 40 uh, mana. The green gems are worth 10 mana. There's also blue gems worth 1, red gems worth 5, uh, purple gems worth 50, and other gems worth other amounts. But for right now, you're really only going to see the green and blue, I think. So that door. Uh, has a little billboard bulletin. Uh, six enemies, five goblins, one dark elf archer. Um, and then you can either go up to the crystal and press E, I think, uh, to start the level, or you can press G on your keyboard. And then that starts the level. So the door is open, and you can't attack them when they're within that purple uh, ring or circle in front of the door because they're invincible, but then once they walk out of it, then you can see that, oh, they have health, and you can attack them. And then here, the towers just have that range. I should have explained that uh, that little yellow area when I was placing the towers, that was their range, or their area of effect, which I don't think that term is actually correct, but it should be range, I guess. Each blast does 71 damage. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs> Just uh, describing the game. Uh, these Dark Elf Archers, if you get too close to them, then they'll just attack you instead of your defenses. I think also the Dark Elf Warriors and Mages um, attack you instead of the uh, defenses. They will attack the defenses if they're the only things there, but for the most part, uh, they'll attack you. Now, in that chest is 40 mana. 40 or four green gems. If I open the chest, then I'm gonna take in one mana, but then since I have 32 instead of 30, then when I take that in, it's only gonna stop me at 40, and then I kind of lose those two, which isn't that big a deal, but just to prevent that, I press M to drop all my mana, and then just walk into the chest to pick up the rest of them, and then the mana just stays there uh, for I think 20 seconds. Uh, and then I can just place another one, and then just wait a bit. Uh, this is equipment, um, helmet, and uh, weapon, and see the mana came back. I never really use equipment when I'm building a defense, because I always stay away from the enemy. Oh, dang it, I just did it. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Um, I don't really use equipment when I'm playing as a builder, as I call them. Uh, someone who works with defenses. I'm gonna stay away from those. Um, so I'm probably not gonna be picking up much uh, equipment right now, unless it's unless it has boosts for your uh, defenses. Like, let's see if these have any. No. No. Okay. Um, sometimes the equipment, whether it be armor or a weapon will also give you stat boosts for your defenses. And those are the only ones I'm going to be picking up. Because I'm not going to be attacking anyone very often. I'm not going to be hit by anyone very often. Uh, so anyways, let's go. Now, there's, now they're coming in from three doors. Uh, and I didn't check how many there were, but I know that these defenses are good enough. Uh, I should also point out that in the top right area of the screen, there's defense units, and those are those show how many defenses you can build. Uh, if you're familiar with like StarCraft or WarCraft, it's kind of like your population um, limit, but you can't like build anything to increase your limit. 
uh, you're pretty much just stuck with it the way it is. Um, and as you can see, my defenses are taking a bit of damage. Uh, but I'm just going to build another one. And right there. And I should also say that when you're building a defense, you can click once to place where it is, and then you're able to move your mouse to change where it's facing. And then click again, obviously. And now we're up to level 2. Uh, gonna increase the attack rate and area of effect for this one, so that now they have a little more range and a little bit faster uh, fire rate, rate of fire. Um, you can also press 4 to repair uh, buildings or defenses that have been damaged. Also for all of these uh, hotkeys or shortcuts, um, you can also like have different key bindings to change what keys do what. But I always just stick with the basics, or the defaults. So that now you have five of those. And another thing is you can press, if you're using a mouse, you can press the click the mouse wheel and it brings up this wheel of uh, things to do. Summon defenses, check out your hero stuff, sell the defense, repair, upgrade, which I can't do yet. Uh, if we go to hero, you can look at your hero info. Uh, close that. Okay. Um, detonate traps, that's for something else. Uh, you can heal yourself, and then there's other uh, things you can do there uh, that I'll explain later. And then these are the five towers that the apprentice can build. Um, but you need to be at a level, a higher level to build these things, obviously. And what else? Uh, there it says uses three defense units. So, again, in the top right corner, it'll show you how many defense units uh, you still have or have used, I guess you could say. Um, now, because I've played this level already, I know where all the enemies are going to come from. And it's kind of obvious because there's, you know, a door right there, same kind of door as the others. Um, so I'm just going to build a couple towers here. Now, um, because this game does kind of take a while, it, like it's a lot of running around, building stuff, uh, and I don't always have something interesting to talk about, or at least not an interesting way to talk about it, then I'm going to do a jump cut, which... I mean, it's, I'm sure that's the actual technical term for it, or maybe not, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut out uh, when I'm actually building things, because that just takes time, it's boring and talking and whatnot. So the way that I'm going to kind of establish that I do that is I'm just going to say, jump, cut, okay. So that was a jump cut, and I just built some stuff, and yeah. Now uh, you can also hold shift, I think left shift? Yeah, left, left shift um, to view a mini map of the screen, or a map of the level, I guess. You can also see the enemy billboards to see which enemies are coming from where, where you built your towers, and this is the crystal that you're defending, by the way. Uh, those monsters, minions, will just walk up and follow this path up to here. Uh, this is the Defender's Forge, where you can activate. Just look at your hero info. Oops. Uh, item box, look at a bunch of stuff you have, uh, or swap here over someone else. So, without further ado, next round! I like to stand up here and just sort of watch the mayhem, even though it's not really that much mayhem at this point. Because all the enemies are pretty easy and my towers are pretty lame. Because they fire slow, they don't do much damage, they don't have much range. So yeah. This is pretty much what the rest of the Let's Play is going to be like. I mean, obviously when I level them, level up more, the towers will look cooler and the maps will be bigger and all that stuff. But essentially, this is all it's going to be. Just me standing here, or running around, looking at the enemies being demolished by my towers. And then just run around and collect some mana repair a few things. Also, uh, something like when you're building or repairing or upgrading, it takes longer to do when you are in um, in the combat phase rather than the build phase. 
Um, that's just so that you're not, well, kind of speaks for itself, I guess, for why they would do that. Oh, dang it. Um, Okay, I thought I heard something. Um, just cut that out. Okay, uh, so because I upgraded the health of the defenses, it increased the maximum health, but it didn't add the maximum health, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't add the health that I added. I'm not sure if that explained it any better, but uh, whenever you upgrade their maximum health, their current health stays the same. So that's why it says that they're damaged, or it looks like they're hurt, but they didn't lose any health, they just gained more maximum health. But then you gotta go in and repair it all, otherwise it makes no difference if you upgraded their maximum health. Alright, so, I'm going to do another jump cut, just so that I can repair all these and build and whatnot. So, jump, cut, okay. So now I'm back, and I uh, built a few defenses, and I have no more mana. So let's go! Uh, these are the new type of enemy, the orc, which is big, and slow, and strong, and has a bunch of health. Um, so they're, they're kind of like the tanks uh, for this game, while well, the goblins are just little, uh, what's, the, what's the word, cannon fodder? Uh, slow, or not, not that slow, but uh, low health, weak, but they come in masses, so, you know, one is fine, but if you've got like 50 of them crawling at one tower, then that tower is probably gone. Uh, archers, they're difficult um, to deal with just because of their range, like if they, for some reason, have a bigger range than your towers, then they can attack from a distance and not get hurt, so you need to go in and finish the job. And speaking of which, I'll increase the area of effect and damage. Um, just because I like being all neat and upgrading things all together, which is something you'll probably notice. Also in my building, I like to make things kind of symmetrical, or I usually say OCD, but I'm not actually OCD, so it's kind of like not really saying you're handicapped, because being OCD isn't handicapped, but I'm just gonna stop. Uh, <laughs> I like to be, uh, I try to be symmetrical-ish. Now, because I have 100 mana, I can use that to upgrade with 5, or whatever button you choose. Um, so now, this tower, you can also uh, look at a tower, it'll show you their health and who it's summoned by, then press E to show the details. To show their kills, defense units, attack range, attack damage, attack rate. So these are those for the magic missile tower that I upgraded, and these are those for the ones that I didn't. So obviously you can see that all the all the stats got upgraded, and that's supposed to go away, but for some reason it's not. Okay, that's good. Anyways, uh, ignore that. Uh, what am I doing? Okay. I don't actually need to do anything. Okay. Uh, even though there's still mana to be collected, I'm just gonna go right into combat phase. Because I'm sure my defenses are good enough. I don't need to upgrade anything. You know, because I mean, there's not much I can upgrade. Uh, because of how much it costs to upgrade, and how little mana I have, and how many towers there are, and all that. Also, I think you get an experience boost when you have full defense units, like I do, uh, which is a good thing about this building strategy, is that then you're pretty much even everywhere, and you get the defense boost, or defense unit experience boost. But I can't remember if that's actually true. I think it is. I think I tested it at one time, but I haven't checked since then. And this is a, almost the end of the first level because it's the final wave. And one more enemy. In case you didn't notice, there was that little bar on the top right to show you how many enemies there were total and how many enemies were killed. And now for a huge experience boost for some reason, probably because of that defense units. 
I'm now going up to level 7 from level 4, so I have 8 points to spend. And I'm just going to spend them evenly for all across the board. For no reason. Could have just done twice, but anyways. I have the overcharge ability and the summon fireball tower, which is number 8. Also, I didn't talk about the magical blockade. I'll talk about that next episode. Now, as you might be able to tell, in the bottom left corner, I have a whole bunch of mana. And that is because a while, like a long few months ago, I got this free mod thing and gave myself a bunch of awesome mana and stats and items and whatnot. And that kind of broke the game. Not like I couldn't play it, but just, I mean, I totally dominated everything. So, it wasn't really fun anymore. I mean, it was for a little while, but then I had to get rid of all that mod stuff, and I never really got rid of the mana. And the way you use mana... Uh, let's see, I didn't pick anything up. So, let's see if there's some armor. There it is. Also, it'll be green if it's better than what you currently have, and since I have nothing, pretty much anything is better than nothing. You can press E to store it in your item box, or F to equip the item. Some items uh, require that you be a higher level, uh, so you won't be able to equip it, you'll just be able to put it in your item box. I never pick those up, because by the time you get to that level, you'll probably find a better item. But anyways, here, you can invest, uh, you can click this to invest mana into your item, and be able to increase the stats that it upgrades. Obviously, if there's multiple stats that it upgrades, you can choose to upgrade different ones. You can click this bus this button to invest and then do that, or you can click this button to invest all, which basically just invests until the next level, and because I have so much, there's no reason not to, unless you use pro mode, which means that it'll just let you choose which ones you want to upgrade as long as you have enough mana, which I do. Now it'll stop you on the last upgrade, kind of just to tell you, oh hey, this is the last one you can upgrade, then you can either do this one, or just press invest all. And once you upgrade it to the max, you can rename your stuff. You can just type in a bunch of random letters if you want. Uh, and then now it's called that for ever. And then you can choose which one you want to upgrade. And it'll say Forged by Merlin, or whoever your name is. Uh, generic damage resistant bonus. Yeah. But, you know, because I don't like using items and feels kind of like cheating to use that kind of mana when I have all this mana. I'm just going to not use it. And that'll be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.